So this is the basis of the card today, um, basically. I haven't attached these butterflies down. Um, these can be arranged in any which way you choose, to be honest. Um, I say it's just showing you the process of how these things are made and then how you can, if you do decide to make the card, it's how you compose it. It is entirely up to you, of course. Um, I've used the three butterflies because I like the idea of... Um, you like when you see these like specimen cards with the moths and the butterflies and things. I actually quite like that idea, so I like to stack them. But this would equally work if you just had one butterfly on there, or just the two, or just two matching like so. Um, this is the set that I'm using today. It's the layering stencils, the be beautiful butterflies. These are actually in stock. Now... Um, Many of you may remember when these were released. There was actually released, not as a set, but they had a coordinating embossing folder that came with dies, which I will be using later. Unfortunately, that isn't in stock, but I will use the dies, obviously, to cut out the butterflies. And it also came with the foiling plates. Now, they aren't in stock either, so I shan't be using those today, and I won't be teasing you <laughs> with those, but I'm sure... Um, as they're out of stock, there's many of you that will have them sitting at home on your shelves. So by all means, um, they can be used with this as well. But I just wanted to just really use the stencils because you can get so many looks from the butterflies from it. And as I said in my little um, introduction on in the group there, I just wanted to use sort of autumn colours. So I haven't gone for the pretty sort of pinks and mauves, but um, purple butterflies, whatever. I've just sort of been inspired by the colours that I'm seeing in the garden at the moment, to be honest. Um, I do like this time of year. Normally when it's a nice crisp sunny day, not so much the, the damp wet weather, but I do like the colours that are out there at the moment. Okay, so the other thing I will show you um, also the process is how I create the background here. Um, so it involves a little bit of stamping, a little bit of shading, and I've used the scroll embossing folder and die, and I do believe those are in stock at the moment too. Um, I just thought it was a really nice background, um, nice way to nice way to use the scroll if you um, want to have any more ideas on how to use that. Um, but yeah, it just creates a really nice background for the for the butterflies there. Okay, so we're going to start with our um, layering stencils with the butterflies. So it's a set of seven stencils. And you have five butterflies on each stencil. Um, but I'm not going to be using all of them. I'm just going to be using this, uh, the three smallest ones. Now, I'm actually going to be using just a small piece of card, and this is actually a great way to use up um, your scraps. Because I'm using a smaller piece, um, and I don't have the chance to line it up against the top of the ultimate here to actually keep it in place, I'm actually going to tape that. I wouldn't normally, but in this situation, I think I would. And because the area that I'm stenciling is going to be die cut, um, I'm not going to worry too much about the tape that I use because sometimes I find and I think this is more to do with the tape that I use as opposed to the cardstock itself which is Lisa's um, sometimes it can tear but but obviously if I put the tape away from the area that I'm stenciling that isn't going to be too much of a problem so I'm going to be using a mixture of well the majority of the inks I'll be using are Lisa's but I am going to be using the base of Distress Ink and um, purely because I like this as a, a really neutral colour and I think it will just show that um, you can mix and match your inks because not everybody's going to have the whole range of Lisa's inks. You may have dipped in and tried out your couple of favourite colours um, and you will have other inks at home which you want to use. Um, so I think this would just be quite useful for people to sort of realise that you can dip in and out of the different makes. So I'm using the Distress Ink, which is... Um, just the normal original Distress Ink. And this pumice stone is a really nice neutral colour for the background. And it's also the colour that I used in the background for the um, the landscape as well. So it just keeps everything um, coordinated. 
Okay, so we come in with number two. So we have the bodies of the butterflies here. Now, if you're using this or any stencil for the first time, I always like to keep the um, the packaging here for reference. Even if you don't use the colours, it sort of vi helps you visualise what area and how it's going to look on the on the stencil. And it that will help you choose the colours that you use. Um, to put through the stencil um i know a lot of people say the, the stencil choice or the color choices they make through the stencils aren't always right and you know what it's the same for us as a design team also um it takes a bit of trial and error and i think some days <laughs> for me for certain you make better judgments than others or you try different combinations but i think in that process in the trying out and seeing what works and what doesn't work you then start becoming more familiar with um the combinations that you can use and also when you see the images broken down in the stencils like this sometimes they can be so abstract and you can't always get a clear a clear picture of what it is or how it's going to look on the finished stencil so i think use the packaging um and that just give you Give you a good guide i would say not every stencil will have details on for every butterfly so we see here that this layer of the stencil only has this third butterfly on so we can just concentrate on that now you'll see that every time i do the blending and this follows through through the ombre effect that i was doing last week and any of the blending that I do with any of the stencil brushes, whether they be these ones or the larger ones, to get a really nice blend, it's always go round and round in a circle, unless you're adding a little bit of detail where you start flicking, but always go round and round and you'll find you'll get yourself a really smooth blend that way. And again, like I've said before on other lives with, um, with regards to blending, work off of your design first. So whether it be onto, um, your messy mat or scrap paper, or in this case, the stencil. Work onto the stencil first, quite close to the area where you're going to be hitting the, the card, and then move on into the design. And you're, that way you'll find you'll get a really nice even blend. Okay, you'll see here that I haven't actually, um, I haven't cleaned the stencils off, and that's just, I've done that on purpose this time around, because it actually reminds me of the colors that I was using for the butterflies this time. So I'm coming in with a larger stencil brush now, just picking up a little bit of yellow so we can really add those details that are gonna to start to pop in those butterflies. So I want to put quite a lot into there. Now, the other thing I was thinking actually, when I was um, prepping this live and stenciling these butterflies, um, when you're building up the design for the butterflies, whichever one you're choosing, um, you don't necessarily have to use every single stencil. Um, if you re, um, have stenciled the effect that you like in the butterfly and you haven't used all the stencils, then it's absolutely fine, you know, to, to stop there. You don't need to always um, use every single stencil. I mean, it, it depends on the the effect that you're looking for. If you're creating some of the smaller butterflies to sit in the background, you may want them to be less apparent. So you may want them to have less detail. So perhaps um, you will just use a little bit. I mean, these butterflies are so pretty as they are like that. And if that's the effect that you wanted with lots of those all over your um, project, I think that would be really lovely. So, and I think that's the same with all stencils. Um, Lisa's given this option, she gives us the tools to create the whole image, but that doesn't mean that we always have to use them. Um, and I think that's uh, an important thing to remember as well. I mean, obviously, if you use the whole lot, then we end up with, you know, a really stunning image. But you can manipulate um, the images to be exactly as you want. Now, I'm just adding a little bit of yellow. Um, I'm not going too vibrant with any of these because say if you see the tone of the project that I created there, it's relatively muted. Um, 
So I'm only picking up a small amount of colour each time and blending that onto the stencil there. Now I have uh, three images on here, um, but I don't want to use the same colour on all images. So I'm concentrating on these two first with the yellow. Um, I'm going to go a little bit brighter on there. And then to create a little bit of contrast, I'm going to come in with some orange. And I'm just going to add that onto the stencil to start with. And I'm just, this is going to be one of the occasions where I actually flick this into the design as opposed to going round and round because I really only want to highlight the edges. And once I take the stencil away, you'll see the effect and the blending effect that that will have. So I'm putting the ink on the stencil around the area to start with and just flicking that on. Now she'll do the same with this larger one. And by flicking that on, you put in a, a sort of minimal amount of ink on, but you are actually creating a lovely blended effect. Now, before I move this stencil, I'm just gonna come in and put orange directly into this butterfly. So this one is a different design completely. So I mean, when we take that away, hopefully you can see, yes, you can see the colours that are starting to blend in in those smaller segments of the butterfly. And I think that is where Lisa's been so clever in giving us that opportunity to create something so pretty. Now she'll do the same with the top part of the wings. So we add our little bit of yellow first and I'm taking the a lot of ink actually off the stencil you can see it's sitting on the stencil uh, material around there so I'm just working that in using the circular motions into the apertures of the stencil there and that is giving me enough color to add into the butterfly so I'm going to add the highlights again with the orange and so I'm going to flick this in and the orange and the yellow just work so well don't they together I mean, it's a combination that can be used for all sorts of different things and all different times of year, actually. I'm going to come in with a bit of grey, I think, on this smaller butterfly here, because this is going to have, as I say, a completely different look. We need some more yellow on this butterfly here, I think. So I think with this final stencil, it means that these butterflies are done. This one needs a little bit more colour, so I shall come in with some yellow on this one, I think good amount of yellow in there so that really brightens that up okay now so at this stage you can start seeing what your butterflies need if they need a little bit extra just to make them pop and I think what I'll do I'll come back to my first stencil and just add some grey in around the edges there give that butterfly some definition but not too much colour around the edge of the wings there. And again, what I want to do here is just flick into the edge of that stencil. So it's basically creating like a, a dark line, probably too much just there. So hopefully I can just blend that out a little bit. Make sure I get those antenna because I think that's their key. There we are, and I shall do the same here. Now I can use the butterflies that I've already created here. But I just wanted to show you how these butterflies layered up. So you can see there, just by adding a little bit of gray around the outside, even though I might be a little bit heavy handed there, that's I don't mind that too much, to be honest. I think that works really well. And I think one extra thing I'll do, because I just wanna add a little bit more definition into the center of this butterfly. What I'll do, I'll just flick through my stencils and look for these areas where I've done the wings, be these final ones here. And I could just add a little bit of gray just in the top section there. We'll just go round and round. And add a little bit there and the same on this one here. There we are, that adds just a little bit of definition in that center part and we'll do the same I think with this next stencil here as well, just to add some interest. Now, 
when you're doing this at home, you'll have hopefully have a lot more time and you can take a lot more care over this. So you can really, really build up that extra shading. Um, you can either use the grey or you can use other colours as well, depending on the base colours that you're using. But you can see now how that's given us a little bit of extra depth for those butterflies there. So that's our stenciling done. Now, as I say, um, this set did come with was designed also to work with uh, an embossing folder that came with some dies. So unfortunately, I don't think this one is in stock, as I said before, but you, chances are you'll have this at home anyway. So this is the embossing fold. You have all five butterflies on there. Um, now my suggestion would be to actually die cut these first with the dies that come with the embossing folder and then you can um oh that one doesn't work on there does it <laughs> there we are that way around um yeah my suggestion would be to actually die cut these first and then individually emboss them through the machine there and this is the effect that you'll have and you can see how that actually br brings those butterflies to life um all I've done here is just to fold up the wings, just to give a little bit more definition. I just I only use finger and thumb, just really gently hold the um, sort of the middle of the butterfly, and I just work one wing at a time, just gently, gently. Um, I suppose I stroke the wing over my the um, top part of my finger there, and that just gives a really nice, gentle, curved um, look, and it just gives so much um, dimension to the butterfly. So you can see the difference there between, I mean, I think this one's slightly more vibrant um, between the, the flat stenciled image and the embossed image there. Both are beautiful and you would use both in different ways on different projects. So we have our butterflies. So now we come to creating the background. So we don't need our ultimate anymore. So I'll just move that to one side. Now for this, I've used the scroll, um, which is an embossing folder and a die. And I do believe that some of these are in stock at the moment. So I've cut this out onto super smooth card and I've actually cut it twice. Um, one of the pieces I've just left die cut. This is what we'll create our background on. The second piece um, I've already um, emboss this so I die cut, die cut it first then I embossed it and all I've done is just highlighted these top edges with some of the pumice stone ink because what I want to do is I want to decoupage these areas the top and bottom onto this once it's finished now to do this we take our scissors and we just follow the line the embossed line that's that's sitting there um, easy to do so it's quite straightforward um, I colour tinted them before I'm cutting as you can see but you don't have to you can do this afterwards I've done it just to save time now this piece do keep because I'm sure you'll find a use for that at some stage and I just want to add a little bit more ink just so as I get a bit more intensity on this edge of the of the piece there so just by adding a bit of um of the pumice stone which is say it's a really nice neutral color it's like a mushroomy color um and depending on what else you put with it it sort of takes on that hue so it's really nice oh excuse me it's really nice um neutral color to use so we have our pieces there and these would then decoupage onto the top and bottom of our scroll like that so we'll keep those to one side we don't need those just yet now to start creating the background on this again back into the pumice stone I shan't be using too much of this but I just want to take off the whiteness of those edges so I don't want to go across the whole piece so I'm just 
picking up it looks like i'm picking up a lot of ink but i've had this ink pad for years actually so it's actually drying out so i'm having to sort of work a little bit harder to pick up the ink there um i really should get myself a, a re-inker for that so i'm just bringing in the color from the edges there i'm not too worried about the top and bottom here because i have the these to decoupage onto it so i will actually be covering those up so we have that on there now just to create a little bit of texture in the background i don't know if you can see on this one really is slight texture there's different ways of doing this depending on what you have at home um lisa has a crackle background stamp there are the textures background stamps which um you've seen us as a design team use an awful lot there's also this one the cracked bark texture which is a large stamp um, it's a really great one to use. Um, I do believe this one is in stock, actually. Um, all I'm going to use is the Distress Ink. Um, I'm going to ink up all of it. I won't use the whole area. And you are not looking for a really in-your-face, bold impression. All you want to do is just create that texture in the background. Um, so I'm going to ink that up with the Pumice Stone. And um, because it... You'll notice actually I haven't taken this off the carrier sheet because of the way these have actually been packaged. There's enough of the carrier sheet on either side to actually hold. Um, and this area is smaller. So all this does is just gives me the opportunity to decide which part of the design I want where. And I'm really only interested on stamping in this sort of central section. Now I'm going to turn this around because I there's more of a concentrated area of design there, which I don't necessarily want. So I'm just going to lay that down gently like so. Give it just a gentle firm over. Say, so I really don't want this to be a really bold impression, but it looks better being there than not. Um, so if I take that away and you can just see that in the background, can you? Let me just look at the screen. Oh yes, you can see that's there. Let me just move that up a little bit. There we are. I hope you can understand when I say it looks better sort of being there than not. If it wasn't there, it'd make the, the background look really plain. But just by being there, it's it adds a little bit something which you, you don't necessarily realise you need, if you see what I'm saying. So all I'm just doing before that ink dries too much, um, I'm just sort of blending that through. Now, because it is a distressed ink, as it dries, it will dry a little bit fainter and it really will blend into the background. Um, so I think that's why using the distress ink for this is perfect. And it's a lovely colour as well, um, without having to worry about blending um, sort of Lisa's inks. Um, I think when she said that round two of inks that are ready to, to be made, um, she has taken care of a brown for us. So... It'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. So the next thing I want to do is just introduce a tiny bit of green just to set the scene, I suppose. So I am going to come back to Lisa's inks here and use the Woodland Moss, which is probably one of my favourite shades of green to use. Um, um, I've set this as being the sort of the bottom and I am just going to gently blend in some of the green. Now, again, as I say, this part is going to be covered, so I'm not too worried about what this area looks like, but it does enable me to apply the ink and push it up into, into the design here, the area that we are going to see. So this area will take off the majority of things, so it gives you a really nice blended area here. And all it's doing, it, as you can see, it's just tinting the area. We don't, but it's entirely up to you how much ink you use. Um, and you can see now, and if I just start putting this on here, you can start seeing how this is going to come together. Um, and it looks so different once you replace these on here. So always bear that in mind, um, that that's sort of the final image that you're working towards. The other thing you can do just to introduce, um, can you see here? Yeah, introduce a sort of a bit more darker green along the bottom here to add a little bit of shading. You can take a blending brush and just where the line of 
this would be that you're going to add on. You can just add in circles, just a little bit sort of more darker green with one of these stencil brushes. And that gives you a bit more of a concentrated area of color that's um, a bit more controllable. And that will just add some shading to the bottom of this area. So it doesn't have to be perfect because when you add that, when you add this area on here, you'll see that it'll actually sort of blend itself away. And always keep checking back by adding that on to there and you can see where you've gone with that. Um, we can sort of add some more in up from the corner, like so. And I will always keep checking back, backwards and forwards. And I think perhaps sometimes this is why these projects take me such a long time. <laughs> okay, so we're starting to build up our picture. Now we can bring in some of the detail on the background here. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. I actually like to use the stamps and I'm using this set, which um, has got lots of foliage. But there's lots of other different ways you can do this. You can actually use dyes as well. But by using the stamps, I just want to show you, um, for one that you can stamp on the top of the Distress Ink that we've added, and also I will use some of the um, pigment ink just to show you um, how these colours um, layer. The majority of what I'm using are the blending inks, as you can see here, because they have the black casing. I shall be using like these, these fronds that are here and this type of stamp as well, which is, I love using this type of stamp. It's, um, I just think it's really, really pretty. And I'm going to ink the stamp. So I will be stamping with the blending inks. I mean, I, they're called blending inks, but you can actually stamp with them. Um, if you want crisp, perfect stamping um like for your text and whatever i would say definitely go with the pigment ink because as i will show you in a second the difference but just for background stamping just to create um uh, just to create sort of landscapes and areas like this you absolutely can use the blending ink so I've, i'm just stamping in this lower section here um when i am stamping with the same stamp i try to alter its orientation so it doesn't look too uniform and also if you're stamping vegetation um, like this try and do it at different levels um, that's what gives sort of the the composition a bit of life I suppose um, I mean if you were doing grass like a clipped manicure, manicured lawn then you obviously you'd want everything all in the same um all at the same height but just try and alter the height a little bit because it, it gives you the impression or the the person looking at the project gives the impression that you've actually used different stamps um so now i'm going to do i'm actually going to use the pigment ink with the same stamp i'll just ink that up now there's different ways of inking your stamp actually um i would say if you're new to stamping take the ink pad to the stamp really really light um don't need to press the ink pad into the stamp because you will sort of flood all the details. And I'm going to stamp this into here and you will see actually straight away the difference between the, now that is really faint, um, the difference between the pigment ink and the blending ink when it comes to stamp. The pigment ink gives a far crisper impression but it's a lot lighter. Let me just ink that again and re-stamp that. Um, oh, that is so faint. Oh yeah, you can see it there just like that. I will use a different colour in a second. But by stamping something lighter like that, you may wonder if it's worth doing or not, but it gives the impression of depth. So I'm going to come in with a different stamp and I'm going to use a grey in the foreground um, and I will use the pigment ink actually because what this will do is will show you the difference in the clarity of the stamping. Now I'm not going to use this whole stamp, I just want to use the leaves and I shall stamp that into the foreground there. 
and I might do one just add some leaves into the corner like that which when you start adding this onto here you can start seeing that that is beginning to build up I might just add one more stamp into the center just to give a little bit more interest I shall use this one here I think which I didn't use in the original let me just ink up like that and I shall stamp that into the foreground there we are you can see and then when we put that on there it hides the messiness underneath and you can actually see the image that you're starting to create now I will leave it at that on there because we don't want to overdo it. Now that you've actually done your stamping and you're happy with the image, then you can run this through with your embossing folder. And it's amazing actually how different this, it makes it look. So, how are we doing for time? Oh. Okay, so I'll just run this through. Make sure you have it the right way around. There is subtle differences actually with on this embossing. There is a, a right way and a wrong way. So make sure you just check, check the um, detail on the side of the scroll before you pop that into your embossing folder. And okay, and you can see that by running that through, and if I just pop on the details here, the difference that that makes I think is um, quite amazing. And hopefully this has given you a different way to actually use this scroll set as well, which was so popular when it was first released. And it just gives you a really nice, really nice sort of background to either build um, a scene on like this and say we can start adding our butterflies, however many you'd like. Um, now, if I bring in the original card, what you can see that I've done here is I've actually set this onto an embossed piece in the background. I've actually used the weave embossing folder, which I think gives a really nice background. Now, to create the shadow effect on the down the side here, um, all I've done is die cut a second piece of the scroll. I die cut a second piece of the scroll and I actually cut it in half and then I offset it underneath the, the top half there. So that gives you um, a really nice sort of mounted look um, without having to sort of go too straight on the edge. Now it works if you use the um, white also. So that's just a different way to actually add detail because obviously we you can't create sort of a matte layer that would go all the way around but I think that just gives a really nice bit of shading um, to the scroll itself I'll just take that out now when you create any any sort of landscape like this and I would say just practice onto a piece of um, card first and I kept this just to show you this is just what I use just to before I stamped um, directly onto my project just to, to um, to see what would work I just tried out different colours and just different compositions so it's handy just to keep as a reference on the side without going directly onto your project to start with and perhaps putting something in the wrong place that you'll that you'd regret so hopefully um, that's given you a few ideas now there are different ways obviously this can be a perfect canvas for any type of any of your die cuts and I've actually used um, the stamp set that I showed you earlier and just stamped some of the images on here and coloured them in. I've coloured in these with Copics. And these would be great to layer up also onto your card. And these would be, I think you could make fabulous men's cards with these also. You can um, perhaps die cut and some and colour in some of your gnomes. Um, they would work a treat, I think, as well. Um, and I've used some of the florals here that you could also add on there's just different ways i've actually stamped these onto lisa's white card colored them in copics and then just gently gone over with the pumice stone just to take off the the bright of the white of the cardstock so that will just allow them just to sort of blend in 
tonally with the rest of the rest of the card there so i think that that would work really well as well it's just a really nice sort of canvas to to add any of your die cuts onto really but I hopefully that's sort of giving you into some insight into how to create these um, things. Um, I've really enjoyed today. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll catch up with you again next week.